Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. If it's your first time on the channel, welcome on this channel. You find truck and SUV news, reviews, interesting stuff. So subscribe, stick around, it's a good time. In this video, I talked to Brian Finn. He's a fan of the channel who just bought a 2020 Ford F-150 with a 2.7 liter engine. He did a review on this, which I'll link to that above, on his initial purchase of it. Now we're talking 30 days later. 30 days have passed this truck. He's been to the dealer a few times. He's got some thoughts on fuel economy. It's a really interesting conversation for the guys out there who are looking for a new truck. So sit back, pop a top, get a little popcorn, do what you gotta do. It's a good interview. Let's go and get started on this interview right now. I'm joined by Brian Finn, who recently bought a Ford truck. There's a video on this channel, I'll link that above. Ding, 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 that's how that works. And uh, we want to discuss 30 days of ownership because I think it's really important to understand uh, what happens in those first 30 days. There's a J.D. Power initial quality study that everybody's like, well, that's just crap. You can't decide anything in 30 days. But we talked to my friend Brian Finn here, and he's, he's made a few uh, conclusions in his first 30 days of owning the F-150. So let, let's back up for a second. So you bought this F-150. Can you, so, so let's describe the audience what it is. It's a crew cab. It's a four uh, I purchased a 2020 um, F-150 crew cab uh, with a 2.7 EcoBoost. Uh, the XL trim with the STX appearance package. Okay, so now you've had this truck 30 days. What do you have before this truck? I think it's kind of important as well. Okay, so um, I had traded in my 2013 Tundra uh, back in January. I was driving my wife's Venza and uh, all this stuff happened. My wife got a new Tacoma. And after a couple of months of driving the Venza, my wife's like, we're, we're going to drive that until the wheels fall off. Well, the wheel bearing did go. So technically I did do that. And at, in mid-March, I decided I can't do it. I have got to, I have to be in a truck again. Um, my wife loves her Tacoma, not for a full-size man. So in March, mid-March, right when everything is, of course, going nuts, I decided, okay, I'm going to start looking for a truck that wasn't a Tundra. So I had a Tundra. So getting another Tundra really wasn't what I was looking for considering uh, my drive every day. Okay, so yeah, fuel economy was a big concern for you. And, yeah. and basically from 2013 to 2020, going into 20, whenever, the Tundra hasn't really changed. There's not right. much to, to yeah. go fuel economy there. So you shopped fuel economy. You, I know you and I were texting back and forth a little bit. You shopped all the different brands. You, you drove quite a, uh, quite a bit of trucks. Yes, so I actually drove more trucks than you did, Tim. Uh, I actually got a hand uh, a, a a 2020 um, Nissan Titan. I know you weren't able to get out there in Nebraska. Um, I was able to. I I, I test drove that. Um, it was a beast. It was absolutely a beast. But uh, it was a Nissan, and it was a Nissan, and it was a Nissan. So they do a lot right, but not what I was looking for. And getting 22 MPGs, I know it's a sticker. Uh, it just wasn't what I was looking for. It was almost too much truck. I don't, I, I don't need a lot of things. Uh, I don't really tow a lot. So um, I said no to Silverado at first. And then I, I went and tested over Silverado, the 2.7, the one that no one wants, their four-cylinder. It was fine. Um, the eight-speed scared the hell out of me, I'll be honest with you. That was my biggest concern. The interior for what you get, in the Silverado, um, their basic trim, um, which I don't know, what do they call? I don't know what they call their basic trim. Yeah, it's uh, like a LT. LT, there we go. Um, their LT, uh, it, it it was just terrible. And having a four cylinder, um, I test drove Ram. I test drove a 3.6 Ram, uh, a 2019, which was a holdover. Um, it, it, it was fine. It didn't knock my socks off. It was fine. And then I even test drove an Eco Diesel that I found. I found at the back of the dealership. Oh, we didn't even know we had it. Yeah. Um, but it was a four by four with a slight lift actually. And it was a lot more truck than I think I needed. Part of me is like, well, you know, it is an eco diesel. It's a four by four. I, I live in the central Valley of California. I don't tow, I don't go to the snow. So um, after about, I don't know, about eight weeks, uh, I had a, I had a broker. I had a broker working for me to try to find a truck. And it just came down to no one had what I wanted what I wanted to pay, right? I mean, trust me, you can always find what you want if you're willing to pay enough money. Sure, sure, sure. So after a while, my local dealer, which is about 45 miles away, I, I called him. I said, you know, this is ridiculous. This is what I want. This is what I want to pay. Can you do it? And three days later, they called back and said, yeah, um, why don't you come test drive it? So I took my kids and myself and we went for an hour and a half long test drive. Apparently I set a record for the dealer, but I, 
if you're buying a forty thousand dollar vehicle or anything, you need to test drive test drive it. You know, take it take it home. Um, go on the road you normally go on. And now with COVID, you go by yourself. There's no pressure of having a salesman who doesn't know anything about the vehicle telling you what road to go down. Because you know they practice the good roads. Mm-hmm. So uh, I live kind of out in the country and I took it for an hour and a half long test drive. I took it in the city, I took it on the freeway. Um, I, like I said, I, I drove home. I, you know, I did everything you're supposed to do in a test drive. And um, they came back and uh, it was the price I wanted to pay and we were good. It just took, you know, nine, 10, three months or whatever it ended up, ended up being. Right, right. So what sold you on the truck to begin with? I mean, what was the, what was the thing that sold you? Okay, well, I had a Tundra. Tundra's huge inside. The F-150, although dimensionally, I think the exact measurements, they're very similar. All full-size trucks are pretty similar. It's massive inside an F-150. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I actually, I know it's bigger than the Tundra. Um, it drove, like, it was fun. And I'm not like, I don't even have a lead foot, but that 2.7 off the line, it, it's peppy. And I know it's a turbo. Um, this The transmission, when you go from a six-speed Tundra, which isn't a bad transmission at all. I mean, but it's been around since, you know, the Civil War. And, you know, you go from a 10, you know, you go from a six-speed V8, it takes a second or two to get it going. It's a big, heavy vehicle. F-150, what they knocked off, what, 800 pounds. The 10-speed, and I know people have said, oh, I, you know, the 10-speed this and that. 10 speeds now, what, three years old, I think. So it's been in there for a while. Um, and it's it's quick. It's, it's, it's surprising for such a small engine. It, it's stupid quick, and I'm not even that. I, I don't do stupid things, but I had fun. I had fun driving it, um, and it's quiet. It's strange how quiet it is, and it, and, and this isn't even a luxury package. And this is an XL. You know, there's nothing fancy in it. I mean, it has the Sync Three, which is terrible. But I mean, I don't have anything particularly fancy. I have uh, fog lights, and I have uh, slightly better tires. Um, they're Michelin's, and they're quiet. Um, it stops on a dime, which I guess all new vehicles should. Um, and it was just fun. It was, it was, it was everything I needed. And like I said, it's huge inside. Um, and then, then the fuel economy. All right. So it was a lot of fun, but now is it still a lot of fun? Okay. So uh, I was 300 miles in and my rear view camera, uh, fell apart. And what I mean fell apart is I was backing up and the rear view camera said, see your dealer on the screen. So I'm like, okay, now it was hot. I mean, where I live, it was about 110, but I'm like, okay, it's a camera, you know, like, so I'm like, okay, you know what, it, it's just a glitch, you know, stuff happens, you, know, you have a new vehicle, you, you know, I'm like, okay, and then I got to my destination, I'm like, okay, and then I got it in again, and it was kind of wavy, it, it looked like, uh, well, those of us who are old enough, remember, you had to adjust the antenna on your TV, you know, to get better reception, and it said, see your dealer, and I'm like, nope, so I actually recorded it, I actually, I think I sent you a screenshot, Tim, to be like, okay, I'm assuming this isn't normal. I mean, and I know it's not normal. So I drove it back and they said, oh yeah, uh, it'll be three weeks before we get the part. We're really having an issue with the 2020s. And I said, what? It's a camera. It goes on, it goes off. And they said, yeah, there's something about this. So they got it in about 10 days later, they called me and um, they they got it done in like 45 minutes because it's a little embarrassing. I haven't made a, a payment yet. Um, and um, that was the first issue that I had. Okay. So you, you seem like there's more here. So I'm like, yeah, it's more what, what's the second issue? Stay tuned to next week to find it. No. Um, <laughs> so moving on. Uh, so it, it, it's hot where I live. Uh, I, I do understand basic physics. The turbos have to work hard to cool down the air. It was about 110 one day. I come home and the app, the Ford Ford app, is, which is terrible too, by the way, um, tells me that your car has gone into a deep sleep mode to protect the battery because of inactivity. I drive my car every day. I drive it, you know, 40, 50, 60 miles. And I'm thinking, what? So I go outside, turn the car on, uh, nothing on the, there's no battery uh, indicator. Uh, Coming from a Toyota, even any vehicle, like when the battery starts to go, you kind of get that, you know, you know, and you know, And and I know newer cars have more advanced things, but there was no problem with the truck. So I brought it in and they of course said, well, we need three hours to hook it up to the battery monitor. And I said, ma'am, service advisor, please don't, I, I'm not a fool. Just, just test the battery. Just, just do that. I said, because this is ridiculous. So they tested and it came back and they said, Oh, it's fine. I'm like, okay, sure. So, um, I don't know, a week later, 
I'm sitting there and I'm that guy that goes on these forums, the F-150 forums, and people are talking about different issues, you know, that they have with the trim with the XL and XLTs. And I click and see the problem with the internet is you go down rabbit holes, you know, you're sitting there and you hear the horror stories, you know, and you have fanboys for Ford and fan boys and girls for Chevy. And then you have people, oh, the Tundra's, you know, bulletproof, except for the old transmission cooler. But so, you know, you go down these rabbit holes and before I, before I know it, I'm sitting there and people are like, uh, I just got my dash replaced. And I'm like, your dash? And these are people like had 2019, 2020s. And I wrote like, what's the issue? And they said warping. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, this on a warp. There's, there, there is a, even in the new dash they've now since replaced, there is a little bubble and it's an XL with a lot of plastic. But what had happened was there's separation between the vents and the dash. And it wasn't like, hey, it's plastic, it expands a little bit. It was, why well, I sent you a picture too, Tim. It was a good half an inch on both sides. It looks like it's smiling. And so I call up the dealer and uh, I'm like, what is going on? And I get, you know, a battery and then, uh, the battery was, which is probably the app acting up, but whatever. The camera, okay, but now the dash. So they're very, of course, apologetic, but they're like, we're not going to give you a rental. We'll see what's going on. I'm like, what? You know, what, what do you mean you have to give me a rental? This is a two-day job. So they say, of course, the parts are always two weeks behind because, of course, COVID, pandemic, whatever. They called me about 10 days later, so not quite two weeks, and said, hey, uh, we're going to give you a rental, and you uh, come on in. We have the parts. So it went in, uh, today is what, Thursday? I went in on Tuesday, I got it back on Wednesday with a new dash. And I know that people are like, well, there's gonna be rattles. Well, yeah, eventually, but there's no rattles right now. Um, when they, it's a big job. I looked up the technical service bulletin because I'm that guy. Um, it's a big job. Um, they did a good job, they cleaned up after themselves, but I, it's like a six or seven hour long job. Uh, it's fine now. I mean, it's no longer smiling. The first thing I checked was, I'm going to check. And you it's something that you wouldn't even check on a test drive. How many people have gotten a test drive and like, hey, check the dash right where the vents are. You don't do that. You know, you just don't get in a car and be like, let me check that, you know. Um, so I got it back. And um, this is so that'd be the third technical issue. Um, and like I said, hopefully we have no more because it's a 45 mile away drive. And I feel like I'm starting, I, I feel like I'm dating the service advisor now. She's a very nice lady, but I feel like we have a relationship here. And my wife probably doesn't appreciate that. I, I, I'm going to start bringing her donuts or flowers like, hey, so how are you? Good to see you. How's, you know, you know, here's my truck again. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. And like I said, it, it's always 10 days back order. We're very sorry. It'll never happen again, you know, so yeah, that's been the first, uh, pro I guess it's been about 35 days now, Tim. So this review is a little a little old. So right, I have my right, apologies. You know, well, we were waiting on parts to finish the review up. That's right. That's so, right. The whiskey, the whiskey hadn't come in yet. Right. Yeah, it was still on back order. Well, now, what about fuel economy now? Because that was one of the biggest reasons you bought the truck. So yes. what about fuel economy? Okay. So um, I had uh, a couple trips to the Bay Area uh, that I, I went on, which is about 250 miles. Uh, those of you who know Central Valley, it's pretty flat. You got mountains here and mountains here. And I live in the mountains down here. So uh, I was hoping, you know, the sticker does say 26-ish. I know it's number. Um, when, it, when it was hot, it would hover around 20 miles per gallon. When I was actually in the Bay Area on the freeways there, it was, it was about 20 degrees cooler. Uh, I was getting about 24. And, um, you know, that was, that was with city driving. I recently took a trip to Tahoe. And I averaged exactly hand calculated 21, like 19.5 going up, you know, 20, whatever the exact, I rounded up to the 0.5. So um, on the on the fuel monitor, uh, I have the second trip monitor that I haven't reset. And I know it's the computer, I get it. And it started off at 19, 19.5. Right now it's like at 20.5. I understand it's the computer, but that's at 4,800 miles or so. And it's indicating, according to it, 20.8. Um, I would assume it's off by between 0.5 and 1, so it's about 20 right now, which people, you know, some people are like, hey, 20 is great for a truck, uh, which it is. 20 is nothing to, to sneeze at. When you go from 16, now in a Tundra, the thing about Tundra, it's 16 on the freeway, and even towing, the little towing I did do, like, it generally is 16. I'm not saying, you know, it, you know, I, I got 18 once, but it, it's pretty consistent, and in town, really never drop below like 14 or 15, but that's where it stays. You never, <laughs> as far as I know, I've never known a hundred, you know, driver to say, Hey, I got 18 
I got 19, you know, I squeezed 19 out of that 5'7". It just doesn't happen. It's, it's just too heavy. So my average, like I said, we're, we're about between 20 and 21. And I know Ford right now, there's people who are having issues. I know, Tim, you did, did a thing on it last year. There's a couple of lawsuits now regarding, you know, that 26 number, because that 26 number is right on par with the old eco diesels, right? I think 27 is what the Ram was at, the eco diesel. Um, and I had picked the vehicle because I was trying to avoid Fiat products with diesel motors. And I mean, no offense to anyone who drives those vehicles, but I, I, I had that fear of, okay, there, there's maintenance costs, there's other issues. Um, I know gasoline motors, you know, and I know F-150s, even though the plastic oil pan, this one doesn't have it, it's metal. I can change the oil and I know oil filter, air filter, we're good. I don't have to worry about def. I don't have to change what the fuel filter, the air filter, there's, there's more maintenance, I get it. And I'm like, you know, for an extra mile or two per gallon, uh, I'm not too worried about it. So I don't know what will happen in terms of people getting upset about, you know, um, I'm not getting 26. Yeah, well, if I average out to 23 or 24, I'd be happy. But uh, that's not up to me. That's up to lawyers and Ford and the EPA and whatnot. But we'll see. We'll see. But overall, I'm happy with the, with, with the MPG because I, you know, the, the roads I drive on, I can get 21 or 22. Um, and now it's cooling down here. Uh, so hopefully it'll creep up. Um, will I ever get 26? Uh, I don't think so. So hmm. I'm kind of just throwing that number out of, out of the window. Not even, not even going to shoot for it. That's interesting. Well, at 55, at 55 miles an hour, I did get 25 miles per gallon on a flat road. I did 30 miles. Well, my, my, my commute every day is about 82 and for about 35, 36 miles, it's as flat as can be. And at 55 miles an hour, it, I, I, I can do it, but 55 miles an hour isn't really great on the interstate freeway. So is it possible? I'm sure it is. I also learned about the, they recommend when it's hot to use um, premium when you're towing or when it's hot. Now in the book, there's no definition of hot. I think it's extreme conditions. I think you said it was in like extreme. Right. Yep. Well, I, so that for nine months of the year, am I in extreme conditions? I really don't want to, you know, be pumping 91 in. Uh, I, I've, I've seen guys on their forum say, just put 89 in, it's fine. I have other people that say like, hey, no, just put 87, just make sure it's top tier. I'm like, okay. I, I haven't really noticed a huge difference um, in, in terms of miles per gallon. I mean, if it, if it drops 0.3 or 0 0.4, it's hard to tell. You know, it's 110 degrees, the car is working pretty hard. Um, but I do have a, a thermostat on my um, transmission so I can push to see, oh, my transmission has never gone above 195. So I don't know if Toyota is going to see this video, but it's nice to have that information. I don't know why I ever want to know that information, but now I have it just in case I need to know. Um, the highest I've seen it go is 195. And I average, and I check it every day now, ever since I've seen those videos, um, I average 188. But 195 is the highest that I saw. So I'll, I'll let the uh, Toyota engineering team know and the Ford engineering team as well that I haven't gone above 195. So uh, what Brian's alluding to here, if you haven't seen the videos, there was a change in 2019-2020 model year for Tundra and Sequoia. They removed the transparent oil, oil cooler. It's part of a multi-cool system they have, the heat exchanger, but they're not having a cool transmission anymore. And there is no way to tell what transmission temperature you have in the Tundra because there's no digital gauge. Right. So yes, we're having some fun. He's a, Brian's a big fan of the channel, so he sees everything I put out. Literally, he's gone back to some videos I didn't know existed and commented on them. Yeah, and he's gotten a lot better, guys. He's gotten so much better. Go back to was it the uh, Nissan Titan trailer test? I believe it was one oh, of your first ones. Oh, that was pretty bad. And then I think there was a Honda Ridgeline, which hasn't changed since it came out either. I believe you had one on there, and uh, that was that was that was really good. You've come a long way, and I think you should really be proud of yourself, Tim. Well, thank you for that. Um, no problem. Of coming a long way and doing big changes. Now, you tell me this hat has magical properties. Yes. So uh, now that I've been back to the dealer and I've uh, started a relationship, um, every time I seem to have an issue, I, I make sure that, you know, I kind of straighten up a little bit and let them know um, about, of course, the hat and talking to people just around me in the waiting room. Of course, we're six feet apart, following, of course, all social distancing rules. But um, it would seem that they either know the channel or someone somewhere along the way, when I come in, the attitude seems to change a little bit the second time I ask them about a question. And I believe it's because the hat. Because the three times I've gone in, I missed, I didn't bring it once, and I, they seemed a little salty. And every other time since then, I've got a little bit more respect. So um, uh, here's a plug for your hat. If you're having a problem with your dealer, wear the hat, let them know, just because they could see it when you go in, 
and um, they'll, they'll treat you with more respect, I'm sure. I can almost guarantee it. Maybe not as much respect as other YouTube channels you know, that flail around a lot um, and tell us the truth about everything, but never actually tell you anything. And God bless them, 4 million subscribers or whatever it is. Um, it, it, but anyway, so wear the hat, get the respect. Um, and if you own certain trucks, you are tend to be in the shop more often. I hope that this doesn't mean that I have to use that every time I go back. From now on, I hope it's just oil changes um, and whatnot, because Ford now throws in three or four maintenance uh, maintenance visits, they call it, not an oil change. I don't know what that means. But so, like I said, moving forward, I hope that I don't have to use the power of the hat. OK. All right. So so and by the way, I have a whole uh, grouping of hats here for sale, for sale, 25 bucks, PayPal, me, I'll send you hat. Uh, you get the magical powers too because they are really impressive powers trust me yes yes and i have the old one guys i have the red one because tim couldn't get me a new one in time it was all backed up and a lot of excuses were made situation yeah a lot of excuses made it's okay <laughs> all right so hey will you come back in six months tell us how it's going yeah sure and i'm also working on the tacoma review in an rx 350 review i'm working harder than tim is here um and the Tacoma is delayed, I apologize, because uh, you, you've seen the sky here in California. Every time I go out for the review, it's just covered in ash or dust. So I'm like, car wash, it's dirty again. So we're working on that. My daughter and I are working on that as well. Um, so we'll get that to you soon. Yeah, we all look forward to it. Oh, I'm sure you do. I'm sure <laughs> you do. Thanks for being on the interview. Thank you, Tim. Have a great evening. There you go. There's my interview with Brian. Thanks for being on the channel. Brian, thanks for being a big fan of the channel. And... Good looking hat there, buddy. Also, check out this other video over here for more fun stuff from the channel, website down below, social media, all kind of stuff. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.